Welcome to the Root of Power podcast, where I teach you how to chase your joy, find alignment, and create a life and a business that you love using actionable methods, interviews, and inspiring stories from people who know that true freedom is found within. I'm your host, your always hype woman and sometimes ass kicker, Amanda Chills, and I am so proud of you for choosing to step into your power. Come along, we've got dreams to build. Okay, my love, I have put everything that I offer for free on one page so that we are not doing more work than we have to because why would we do that? Hashtag work smarter, not harder. So livemyhappyhealth.com slash free. You are going to find everything I've created for not only leveling up in your personal life and building a life that you love, but leveling up in your business life and building a business that you love. Okay livemyhappyhealth.com slash free. Love you. Yeah, love. Bam. I hope you are so well. Man, I hope you are just fucking thriving. And I hope that this podcast helps you in some way. Uh, We're doing an entrepreneurship-based one today, all about how entrepreneurship makes you a better human being. Um. Or more accurately, how entrepreneurship helps you grow. So entrepreneurship doesn't always make you a better human. Humans are complicated little gremlins. So sometimes it just makes you more of who you are. But either way, you're going to grow. One, because entrepreneurship is like drinking from a fire hose. Um, (laughs) So you got no choice. And two, because as people get power, They just become more and more of who they are. Okay, so we can just dig right into this one. This isn't a super long episode, just my thoughts on entrepreneurship. I would love to hear your thoughts on this. Um, Please tell me how entrepreneurship has helped you, how it has changed you, and if you agree or disagree with any of these. So the first way that entrepreneurship makes you grow and I think makes you a better human if you are inclined to not be a shitbag in the first place is that entrepreneurship forces you to confront your worst fears. And if you want to succeed, you have to overcome them. So entrepreneurship means you are bringing something into the world that didn't previously exist. So like that's scary and it's hard. And there's a lot of things that come with that, right? Like being seen, you have to put your your product out there. You have to ask for a sale. You have to sell. You have to let people know who you are and what you do. And I think if you really want to be successful, you have to do it in a way that's authentic and true to you. Because if you're trying to be a carbon copy of another business or another entrepreneur, like you're always going to be a second rate version of somebody else instead of being the first rate version of you. So you have to let people see you. And that is scary and it's hard. And it's one of our like core human fears, right? Like if people really knew me, they wouldn't like me. So entrepreneurship forces you to confront that, asking for what you're worth, increasing prices as you grow. um, That can be a really hard one, facing judgment. Not everyone's gonna support you. Not everyone's gonna like you. Not everyone is gonna trust you. And Sometimes there's nothing you can do about that. Like that's maybe on you, but it's probably on them. Like some people don't know how to support people who are succeeding. Some people don't know how to support people who are doing something different. Some people just don't want to. And that's a big truth that I think entrepreneurs need to live with or anyone who's chasing a dream. Like not everybody knows how to support you in that dream. And and that's okay. People have different skill sets. And also not everybody even wants to see you succeed. Like when I started my private practice and started doing well, people at my old job talked hella shit. They don't know that I know they talked hella shit, but they talked hella shit. And I was just out here vibing, doing my things. Like, but they had something to say. And not everybody wants to see you win. And that is, that's a truth that just comes with doing big things. That's a truth that comes with doing brave things. 
Um, it's going to teach you how to handle money and it's going to force you to confront all of your money stories, your ability to make money, to keep it, to manage it, your worth around money, detaching your worth from money. Like there's a lot of fears and stories and conditioning that you have to work through if you want to run a successful business. Um, how good or bad you are with people, like how good or bad you are at managing things at getting things done at consistency at self discipline, like all of those stories and all of those fears are going to rear their ugly heads when you start doing things because entrepreneurship, part of it is always pushing up against your comfort zone. So you always kind of exist in the stretch zone where you're growing, where you're pushing up against growth. And that naturally means that things are going to come up. So like new level, new devil, every time you hit a new level, something comes up that you have to work through because entrepreneurship is really a giant path to growth and self-discovery. Um, one of the other ways that it forces you to be a better person is that in order for your business to grow, you have to grow. Like I'm sure you know people who run a business and they're terrified of everything and they're in scarcity all the time and they're acting and reacting out of fear all the time. Like those people are not having a good time. Okay. They're not like running a business can be easy. It can be fun. It can be flowing is hundred percent of easy. No, fucking obviously not, but it can be those things. But in order for your business to grow, you have to grow. Your capacity to hold things has to expand. Your capacity to sit with discomfort has to expand, to bring people along, to create new products, to create new things. Like you have to grow as your business grows. You have to continually learn and apply and refine skills. The deeper you know yourself, the deeper you know how you work, the more aligned your business is going to be, which means you're growing, you're increasing insight, you're increasing awareness. Number three, it makes you disciplined as fuck. If you want to have a business that you don't hate, discipline is your new best friend. There are going to be days where you don't want to do the work. You don't want to reconcile payments or reach out to vendors or create something or have that conversation with an employee or a client. Like there's going to be a lot of days where you don't want to do that. But just like some days you don't want to get up and go to work and you go to work, your business is the same way, except it's all on you. Nobody's coming to save you. Nobody's coming to tell you, hey, you didn't turn in this thing and we need it because it's 100% on you now. So that level of discipline, that level of self-love, that level of self-care takes a lot of work to cultivate and to maintain. Now, it's less work to maintain than to build, of course, but it does take a lot of discipline. Like you have to have structure. Bleh, you have to have structure. You have to have systems. You have to have processes that are repeatable. It's a lot. It's a lot in every, again, new level, new devil. Every time you scale, every time you reach a new level, you have to refine those. Because running a business means that you're also working yourself out of the job, right? So like when I started my private practice, I was everything. I was everything, marketing, branding, client payments, all the things. As I've grown, I had to work myself out of some of those jobs. I'm not the only therapist now. Um, my little baby birds, we love them so much. So I'm not the only therapist now. I um, have a virtual assistant who handles a lot of things that don't need my brain, my body, or my voice. So that takes discipline to create those systems, to create, um, to time block, to show up, to be consistent. Like that takes a lot of self-discipline and the better you get at that, the better your business is going to run because if you're all over the place, if you're a hot mess, if you're so up and down that you can't function, well, guess what? Neither can your business because your business is dependent on 
you. Now, as you grow, we can make sure it's not as dependent on you, but you will always be the CEO. So your business will always depend on you and your ability to do things and to get things done, which is a good thing. We love that for you. Another way that that entrepreneurship and running a business um, really helps you be a good human, a better human, is that it it gives you the space to be creative. Like I can't tell you how much fun I have creating branding, creating products, thinking about podcast episodes, talking to people about the things that I do. And my brain is just, we can do this and this and this and this and this and this. Now I'm a generator as well. So like, if you look at human design, I'm a generator. So I love to create things. As soon as something drops in, I'm like, fuck yeah, let me go run with this. But there's so much creativity that goes into running a business. not just because you're literally creating things from nothing like yeah you can follow another person's process but you're still creating everything you're messaging your clients your content your products like everything you're creating it which is so cool it is so cool and fun so when your brain is in a creative space and it has to be to build and maintain and run a business it just makes you a better human. It makes you better at problem solving. Like what do businesses do, right? They solve problems for their customers. That's literally it. Um, it makes you better at like just coming up with things and makes you better at brainstorming and brains thrive on creating, right? If humans are left to their own devices, it's not a mistake that we'll do something crafty or artistic. Like our brains need to create things and running a business gives you the perfect opportunity to create a bunch of shit <laughs> like so many things some things aren't going to work out that's totally legit that's fine such as life but the more you create the better your brain is going to work and the more cleansing it is to your system like uh, you just become so much more creative when you're running a business and it is such a freaking gift um and our last one for today, not a super long episode today. Our last one is that it makes you really good at learning skills. Now, again, I'm sure you know people who haven't learned a damn thing in a long time. And I would argue that their business is not doing as well as it could. Because one of the biggest things about running a successful business is adapt or die. You have to be constantly adapting. You can't, I mean, you could, I don't recommend it, but you could just dig your heels in the sand and say, I'm not changing and I'm not doing anything different. Fuck everybody else. Like, cool, your business is going to die. That's what's going to happen. Um, it may die a slow death, but it will die. Adapt or die, which means learning new skills, new ways of connecting to people, new ways to deliver your product, new ways to sell your product, new ways to manage your customers to manage your time like so much of entrepreneurship is experimentation while detaching from the results okay here's a big key like you want to detach from the results and not make them mean anything about you so if you can learn quickly apply quickly and adjust quickly you are the freaking golden triangle okay like the Midas touch 100% but you have to learn a lot of stuff, especially if you're super new to business. You are learning. When I tell you it's like drinking from a fire hose, I'm like literally not exaggerating. That's literally what it feels like because it's so much so, so quickly, especially if you are good at your job. So like when like I was a therapist, right? And I was like, OK, well, I'm going to do therapy, but I'm also marketing, branding, content, advertising, legal, um, office manager payments, accounting, like you wear like 30 different hats and you have to be at least proficient in all of them. You have to be great in all of them. You want to be great at what you do, literally. But you have to be like minimally proficient at the other things, which means it's a lot of <laughs> so much. It's a lot of learning in a short amount of time, um, which is one of the reasons hiring a business coach can be so, so, so beneficial because they're going to reduce the amount of time that it takes for you to learn and apply and tweak and succeed. 
uh, well, they can't guarantee success, but they can collapse time for you, which is, again, so, so, so huge. Like we don't want to wait our whole lives to be successful. We want to collapse time and working with a mentor or a coach is one of the best ways to do that because they've been where you are, right? So they can say, hey, instead of you doing it by trial and error for three years, let me give you a framework. Let me give you a formula and help you apply it. And we can do it in six months. Like that collapse of time is so valuable. So think of how much work you can get done in three years when you're starting off really well versus three years of trial and error to get 30% better versus you get 30% better in six months. Like you can grow so much faster. You can grow so much easier when you have someone showing you the way, kind of like working with a therapist, same thing, right? You're only going to get as far as you know, but if you have someone who can guide you, who can teach you, you're going to collapse time and you're going to get like way, way, way bigger results. This ended up being an ad for business coaching, um, which is awesome. I do that, by the way, if you don't know, sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't, kind of depends on if I really, really jam with the person I'm working with, but if it's something you're interested in, shoot me a message and let me know. And if not, no biggie. Um, so yeah, those are the five ways entrepreneurship makes you a better human. It forces you to confront your fears and to work through them, which makes you braver, right? We're all afraid. We're just doing the damn thing anyway. That's the big secret. It puts you in a position of growth more often than not. It helps you be more disciplined. Because listen, if it's all on you, you're showing up, right? <laughs> I hope you're showing up. Um, it makes you more creative and it helps you get really good at learning how to be minimally proficient very quickly. Um, you have to be amazing at everything. We just have to be proficient enough and then we can learn and add on things. So entrepreneurs, give me your thoughts, man. What am I missing? How has running a business changed you for the better? Um, I would love to hear your thoughts at Amanda underscore chills. And if you love the podcast, please leave a review. And if you hate the podcast, maybe shoot me a message. Uh, but you know, do what you want, man. So I hope you have a beautiful day. To my fellow entrepreneurs, keep on keeping on. Um, okay, y'all have a lovely day.